Hi everyone, our story today is called Diego Rivera, His World and Ours by Duncan Tonachiu. And I love this author because he has a lot of beautiful multicultural books for children that talk about immigration and history, social justice, and art. So our story today um, tells the story of the famous Mexican painter Diego Rivera, and it shows him as this mischievous young boy who has this passion for art, and then later goes on to become one of the most famous painters in the world in the 1900s, as he paints these beautiful murals about Mexican culture and history um, throughout Mexico and then also throughout other countries in the world. So I hope you enjoy. Diego Rivera, His World and Ours by Duncan Tonachiu. Diego Rivera was born in Mexico in a city called Guanajuato, which means the land of frogs. As a boy, Diego enjoyed playing with his trains, but more than anything else, he liked to draw. Diego loved drawing so much that when he was a young man, he sailed on a ship across the ocean. He went to the city of Madrid in Spain to study art under the direction of a well-known painter. There he learned the classical way to paint, which means his finished paintings looked very realistic, almost like photographs. After his studies, Diego went to Paris, the capital of France. There he met young artists who were painting in new and exciting ways. He experimented with some of these new methods of painting himself. One method was called cubism, in which the painting did not exactly resemble its subject, but was composed of geometric shapes such as squares, circles, and triangles. One day, a politician named Jose Vasconcelos urged Diego to return to Mexico. He wanted Diego and other artists to paint murals around the city about the Mexican people's history and customs. Diego was thrilled by this new project. When he returned to his homeland, Diego traveled through its deserts, mountains, and jungles. He wanted to be inspired by his country. He met people who worked the land, and he visited the ruins of ancient Mexican civilizations, like those of the Aztecs and the Maya. Diego was full of ideas after his trips. With the help of his friends and apprentices, he began to paint murals on large walls so that everyone in his country, rich and poor, young and old, could see and learn from them. In his murals, Diego combined the classical way of painting that he had learned as a young man and the new styles of art that he had experimented with abroad. But he merged them with the simple yet elegant forms of ancient Mexican art that he had grown passionate for after his travels. On the walls of an important government building, Diego painted the history of his country. He painted the struggle of the Mexican people to break free from the Spanish king. He also painted the fight that took place many years later when farmers and workers defended themselves against greedy men who were taking advantage of them. Diego painted his country's dances and traditions, such as La Zandunga, a love dance from the coastal area, and the dance of Los Listones, a ribbon dance from the south. He wanted to celebrate the things that were special to Mexico and wanted Mexicans from all distant parts of the land to learn about their culture and feel proud. Diego lived to be an old man. By the time he passed away, he had created many wonderful works of art and was celebrated by people in Mexico as well as around the world. But if he were alive today, what would he paint? Would he paint the way we dress and live? Would he paint the way we play? Would he paint the big city as he painted the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan? Or would he paint students at their desks just as he painted factory workers in the production line? Maybe Diego would paint shops at the mall as he painted street vendors selling flores. Or would he paint the luchadores wrestling in their costumes? just as he painted the Aztec warriors fighting the invading soldiers, the Spanish conquistadores. Would Diego paint our craze for monsters and creatures from outer space as he painted the god Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent? Diego's murals teach us about the past, but they also show a better future for common people. Diego imagined everyone, men and women, boys and girls of all ages and nationalities living together and caring for one another. Today, Diego is not around to make this happen, so it is up to us to make our own murals and bring them to life. The end. That was our book, Diego Rivera, His World and Ours, 
and through this book we see how Diego uses his artwork and murals in order to teach people about history and culture and also to tell stories. And since Diego is no longer around, the author tries to imagine what it would look like if Diego were painting the world around him now. So I want you guys all to tap into your artistic side and using whatever you have at home, whether it's crayons, markers, uh, colored pencils, or if you do have paint, I want you to go ahead and draw a picture that you think represents your family and community, and then write me three sentences to describe what you drew. All right, thank you everyone. Take care and be safe.